Can a landscape photographer take portrait shots? And if so, will there be any good? As a self-confessed landscape photographer, it's not often that I stray away from what I'm normally good at, which is landscape photography. And I have been known to say on many, many occasions that I'm a one-trick pony. I say it on the podcast, say it to friends of mine, I also said it on these episodes of this channel. However, I've often looked at portraiture photography and I've looked at some fantastic images that have been taken by some great photographers over the years and it's something that I've often wondered what would it be like to take those shots. Now very recently I was tasked with a job so my wife's niece, so I suppose my niece as well, was visiting and she wanted to get some shots for her end of year photos for back home in the States and of course because I'm the photographer I was tasked to take those shots now I'd never done anything like that before and I said you know what it's an opportunity for me to try so I said I'd give it a go I didn't really have or don't really have much gear as far as portrait photography is concerned but I said I'd use the gear that I have so my Canon EOS R my 70-200 f4 lens I don't have a 2.8 so that would have to do and I also have a flash and it's not something I use that often now I could have looked for external lighting and reflectors and everything else but I didn't have that and what I decided to do was to come to a various amount of different locations because I wanted to give her a wide variety of shots and the first that I came to here is this place which is Fitzgerald's Park and it's a place that's close to my family home and I knew it very very well so so it gave me the opportunity to be able to help her to get some different types of shots anyway in some areas that I knew and I'd recognize and I often thought might be good for some photos. So I'll give you a look at some of the locations that I would have used for this shoot and I'll show you the images as well and the lessons that I've learned along the way. So the first location I came to is a place called the Daily Bridge or also known as the Shaky Bridge and it's been recently uh, restored and I figured that would be a very nice shot to start the day. And as we were walking past here, then this is what we spotted, which is graffiti, which has some phenomenal colors and great texture as well on the walls. So that gave me another opportunity to have a different type of shot. And I played around with different exposures as well here. Had to use my F4, had to shoot a very, very fast shutter speed, but with the flash, it enabled me to capture the action. Now I did miss a couple of focuses every so often, but overall I was happy with these shots. So this tree was another subject that I decided to use for the photographs. And I really, really liked the texture that you have on the trees here it's very very unusual so that was another one that I used for one of the shots now this park is phenomenal because it has so many different composition opportunities behind me here you have this bridge and also you have this beautiful pond with a fountain as well that's in the center of that and by me coming to here I was able to get a number of different compositions one with the fountain in the background and also a few sitting and standing on the bridge as well below but it was very interesting because I had some nice light as well at the time and enabled me to capture some different shots and the main reason why we came here was for this tree that you see behind me here that's a nice curvature and it gives a nice opportunity as well for her to be able to lie on that tree and at the time we had a nice bit of breaking light as well which came through the foliage and lit it up nicely and along the way as well we made a couple of other pit stops there was a nice red bench as well which I think really really worked for me there's nice colors nice vibrant reds and I think overall then I managed to get some nice shots but also what I learned was I was able to at that point ask her to do different types of poses so we were both getting more comfortable me behind the camera her in front of the camera and when I was actually looking at the back of the images I said okay let's try different things and I had her to look off into the distance look pensive you know look straight at the camera as a traditional shot but it really allowed me then to be able to experiment more and see the types of shots that I could get from this fantastic location. second location that I decided to come to which was a place that I'm always going to be passionate about as a seascape photographer 
the beach and I've come to a location that I have photographed a number of occasions before so I always knew there was going to be an interesting subject and the subject in question is the lighthouse that you can just see here on the horizon which is Ballycott Lighthouse. Now on the day when we arrived I had some nice hazy light as well which allowed me to be able to light up the subject absolutely great and after a very very quick costume change we were able to take some shots on the beach here and it enabled me to use the background of the lighthouse albeit out of focus because I was shooting everything and if for and going for a fast shutter speed using my flash as well to be able to freeze the action and as I said earlier on when we finished in the park we got a bit more comfortable in relation to taking the shots and then I was able to have some fun with Chloe jumping up and down in relation to here in front of the uh, lighthouse and I got some nice shots as well kind of endless as the beach here behind me but yeah this was the second location I was very happy with these shots and so was she thankfully I'd wanted to give different locations and this location is pretty special considering that Chloe is from Wisconsin which is landlocked she not only hadn't seen the sea but there's not that many castles for her to see or let's say get photographs with so I came here which is Photo Castle and what I did was I decided to have a mix of old and new now the light was quite dark so it was quite moody but I managed to get a couple of shots again of here and she was really happy with these shots also wrap it all up we decided to come to a woods that runs right next to my house and we had come here a couple of times actually during the trip for a walk with the kids and with the dog and it's an area that I actually got very familiar with back in the day of Armageddon when I couldn't go anywhere except this wood so I knew that there'd be a number of different compositions that I could find and I could really lean on my experience from my woodland photography now here I managed to get a couple of really really nice shots and I was able to use the uh, landscape as part of the image as well which really really gave me some great shots however it was a challenge because in the late evening when we got here the light was quite low and I was using my flash which was on my camera so it was a struggle to make sure that I had a fast shutter speed and that I didn't actually end up with a shot that was blurred and one of those shots actually was on a log that's right behind me here now there's a lot more water here today than there was when I photographed here on that day but I'm still happy that I got in here because I was able to position Chloe on that log and we had some really really nice light now at this late stage in the day as well Chloe was really really comfortable so we managed to get some really really great candid shots even got Chloe to go into the long grasses and I really liked how those shots turned out also So in the end I really enjoyed the experience and it is something that I think I will try again. Have you ever tried it as a landscape photographer? If you haven't I would really recommend it because it's great to step outside your comfort zone. Now I didn't have the ideal equipment like I said I had my on-camera flash, I had my f4, uh, I would have liked 2.8 off-camera flash and possibly as well some reflectors to be able to adjust the light but nonetheless I was really happy with the shots that I took and I'd encourage you if you haven't done it before to give it a go. So I'm going to finish up this episode. Thank you very much as always for watching. If it's your first time on the channel, please hit the subscribe button, give me a like, give me a comment, and until the next time, schlong the fall.